Morning everyone. I just got out here, it's about 4.45, and I'm not actually milking this morning, but I do have a couple things I wanna do while they're milking. So I have five cows I wanna dry up here this morning. So basically we breed the cows while they're milking, and they'll be in here for seven months of their pregnancy, and when they're two months from being due, we'll stop milking them, take them down to the dry cow barn down the other side of the farm, and they'll get to hang out there, get a little vacation before they have their next calf and are brought back into the milking barn. So once those cows come into the parlor, I'm gonna give them a dry treatment and I'll show you how that works a little bit and I'll sort them out of the herd and then wind up chasing them down to the other barn after the milking then. I'll be working at that here throughout the milking. I'm also gonna do the bedding. We usually bed Wednesday afternoons, but I'm gonna do it right now since I'm out here. It's Wednesday morning. I just got done dry treating my first cow here. She was on the first side of pen one. I'm gonna sort her out. Come on, come on. 510 right there. That cow, I dried her up on the back side of the parlor there, sorted her out, and chased her over to the pre fresh pen. They're getting group two over now, so I'm gonna need to bed up very soon. I'm gonna go get that ready. Getting my skid loader and wood shavings here. You've seen me spraying that liquid product on the beds up there. So now we're only doing that twice a week, Monday and Friday, and then the Wednesday bedding, we're just adding this, uh, this product here. This stuff is not nasty like the hydrated lime and it seems to help too, so kind of mixing it up and using a couple different products to try to help keep the cows from getting mastitis from bacteria that would be in the bedding. It works out pretty good with bedding. We just have to pen the cows out that are trying to come back for a little bit. And then we can do half the barn at once, get that done. And I'll have to do the other side later in the milking then. Parked my skitty over there. They're starting to milk pen two now, and there's one cow in there we want to dry up. So I'm gonna go find her and wait till she's done milking. I'm waiting for the next cow to come into the parlor so I can dry her up. Just want to show you what we do for dry treatment. This here is an antibiotic that we're giving. It really helps prevent any mastitis from starting during the dry period. And then this right here is called lockout. This is a sealant and the sealer will just go in the teat and stay there to keep any dirt from making its way up into the udder. So with this, they're going to have some antibiotics in their udder. So when they come back into the barn to milk in two months, we can't put their milk in right away. So if we would put it in, they would, they test for antibiotics in every load, and if they find some, they dump the whole tank. We have to keep her milk out for a couple days before we can start milking her in and selling her milk. So once they're ready for me here, I'm gonna take this out. I'll go through with the alcohol pad, clean off the teat ends, put the treatment in, and then uh, we'll go ahead and go over it again with the alcohol pad and put the sealant in the ends. So this is the next cow I wanna do right here. She's almost done milking.
I'm waiting for the second cow to come through here to sort her out. Dad's getting started on the feeding. So in my last video I said he had hurt his shoulder a little bit. He's doing a lot better. Right there, 659. I finished drying up all those cows now. Five in total. There's two in this last side that I need to separate out here. Just dried up this 553 right here. She has the highest genomic test in the herd, the highest net merit score. So basically according to her genetics, she should be our most profitable cow. Now that doesn't always work out, but she's a really good cow. She's a good milker and just a good temperament. Doesn't get into trouble or anything. So yeah, if you're wondering what my favorite cow is, she might be my favorite cow, number 553. Just need to throw bedding into this last group here now. I actually came out and bed up a quarter of the barn there before I had to dry those cows up because I knew I would be kind of pushed for time there. So just have one group here. Let's get a view from up there. See if I can climb up here. I'm gonna go ahead and bed the special needs pen up now. They're in milking them right now, so I got time to do it. I put the five cows I dried up here in the pre-fresh pen. Dad's coming here and we're gonna chase them down to the dry cow barn down there. Oh, come on, come on. All right, so now these cows will be on vacation for two months. They can go out to the meadow, hang out. Last thing I need to do before breakfast is mix feed for the heifers here. This morning I got a couple things going on. I'm waiting for the hay chopper to show up. So we grind up our hay bales 
and uh, he's got a machine that will run them through. I'll just load him. Once he gets here, we're gonna work at that. But uh, we also have the vet coming because there's a cow that needs uh, actually an operation done. There was a cow, she had a set of twins about 10 days ago, number 593, which is right there. Usually cows that have twins have a little bit more trouble getting started, and uh, she was one that just didn't, didn't get off to a great start and hasn't been eating well. So then what can happen is they get what we call a twisted stomach or a DA, stands for displaced abomasum. So basically there's the one part of the stomach that gets twisted somehow and then she needs a little operation to get it fixed. So it's a, it's a pretty common operation they do. We don't have too many of them, thankfully. We don't do a lot of, uh, of these surgeries, but sometimes we have a cow that needs it. I might sort her out, get her in this pen right now so that she's ready. Got a little wood shavings coming in right now. The vet is here and she's taking care of that cow. Put her to sleep and laid her out. It's gonna do the surgery quick and it shouldn't take too long. I'm waiting for that hay trapper to show up and while I'm waiting, I guess I'll work at my office a bit more. Just working on putting the outside walls on here. The vet just left here, finished up with this cow, didn't take her more than an hour. So she basically just put her to sleep, laid her out, and cut open a little bit there in the midsection so she could re reach in and straighten out that part of the stomach there and sewed her back up. So she should recover. I'm gonna keep an eye on her the next couple days, make sure she's eating, that's the main thing. Thankfully we don't have this happen too often. You see right there which is where she sewed up. All right, girl, come on. So my hay chopper's here now. I'm gonna get ready to load them up. gonna feed this beast right here for the next while. So our feed mixer does have knives on it, but we like to get the hay pre-ground just because then we don't have to worry about running our mixer so much. And uh, to try to get a consistent size, it's just a lot simpler to get it ground up before we feed it. This is all purchased hay. We don't grow any dry baled hay.
one bay is full. I got all the hay out of that second bay, put it outside so we can fill that one too. We got two bays worth of hay chopped. Just had four bales left that we couldn't quite fit, but uh, that's fine. I'm starting to mix feed now. This hay is mainly fed to the dry cows. We do give a little bit to the milking cows, but uh, it's kind of a low value hay. Cows like it, but it just doesn't have a lot of nutrients. It's kind of a filler almost. If we give them too much uh, nutrients, they can gain weight during the dry period. So I just started the dry cow batch here. I'm gonna load up hay and uh, get corn silage. Make sure you hit the like button and I'll catch you in the next one.